Okay. Hey there. Welcome to another episode of Power Pearls Podcast, the video episode of Power Pearls Podcast. My name is Kara Gott Warner, and I'm the host of the podcast, designer, coach, and your ultimate cheerleader on your yarn crafting path. You can catch me here every Friday on the Power Pearls Facebook page for the live edition of Power Pearls Podcast. And as you guys can see, I have a special guest in the room. Hi, Beth everybody. Whiteside. Beth Whiteside is uh, an expert knitwear designer, teacher, and she's done a lot with, in creative knitting. So we've worked together for years. So she is a real veteran in the industry. So Beth, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kara. I'm really happy to be here. This is great. So to, together, what we're going to do is we're going to dig into what it takes to start a small to start small and to build a sustainable yarn crafting uh, business and how to merge both traditional approaches with digital marketing tools. So that's what we're going to talk about. But before we do, and I'm just going to wait because it's, I see the numbers going up for people joining the room. So I think I will just have to take a, take a few minutes here or, or a few seconds really and wait and see because then I'm going to say hello to everyone um, that comes into the room and ask for everyone to share. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So you guys, I can't see your comments. Okay, there you guys coming yeah. in. Hi, Paula. Hey, Paula. How are you? So um, if you could take a moment before we we start the conversation, if you guys can share with your Facebook friends, that would be so awesome. And so I'll just sit here and wait and you guys can just <laughs> can let us know. Hey, Sue, Marie, <laughs> we got people coming into the room. Right. Awesome. Okay. So, hey, so yeah, just where are you viewing from, you guys? I know you guys always start before me. Now you know the drill. So we have, yes, we have Bev, Marie, Sue, Jana, Reba. This is awesome. Okay, you guys. So please, if you can take a moment, just let your friends know that there's a lot of fun happening over here on the, on the Power Pearls Facebook page. And this is the video edition of Power Pearls podcast. And so I'm here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time doing my thing. And we have Cynthia in the room from Raymore, Missouri. And Atlanta, uh, we have Reba. Is that Emma is Missouri, right? Yeah. No? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, so I guess, no, M I, like, M -I no, M I is Michigan, right? No, Minnesota. Wait, M I. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. I'm getting my relations <laughs> wrong. Um, <laughs> okay, scratch that. Hello, Evelyn from New Jersey. Yay, Jersey. I know, Evelyn, you're not an original Jersey girl, but I am. So I say yay. Uh, oh, and wow. so, yeah, so you guys, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I guess we'll get going. Um, and so, like I said, I am Kara Gott Warner, and I'm here with Beth Whiteside, designer extraordinaire and teacher. And we've done a lot of work together um, in oh, creative yeah. writing. Oh my gosh. So we're going to go share, start to share some resources. And, you know, it's like these, also these questions that you need to ask yourself before you decide to go down this path and to understand really what your why is, right? So we're going to dig into yeah. that, Beth, yeah. and we're going to talk about some stories. So, um, and all, and also you guys at the end, so be sure to stick around because Beth has a special gift for all you guys at the end of this broadcast so you cannot leave <laughs> so so in regards to those stories you know there's so many amazing stories and different paths when it comes to how we all entered this world and how we embarked on our journey uh, to become a designer so there's no set blueprint or career path right right you know that's something that everyone wishes there was some kind of a career path but there right. isn't but actually I, I, I think that's exciting that I think because we can we can develop that ourselves because there's no right or wrong way. It's so, empowering. It's not like going to college and becoming a doctor and you follow a set path and then you become an intern and a resident and all of that. It's it's very, and, and depending on who you talk to, you're going to find out different stuff. So, Kara, Exactly. You, so, no, I totally agree. And I wanted you to jump in first, Beth, anyway, because I'm just, you know, talking too much already. Um, but like, what is your story? Why don't, you know, why don't sure. you kind of introduce with... everybody there and then we'll kind of go into maybe my story again a little bit. Sure. I haven't talked about that lately, but go for sure. it. Sure. So, so it's not, as I said, I mean, you could, you could go to college for fashion design and things like that. And then you have more of an angle, a background that is, 
more background to help you move into the industry. But but on its own, there's there's really no um, blueprint to follow. We we all have our own path, and so you know my path uh, is very convoluted. It's it, and meandering. Um, in fact, it, it's still sort of, I'm still sort of figuring out where it's going. Um, so living with uncertainty um, is part of what you're going to experience. So if you're feeling that right now, it's normal. And most of us feel it, uh, if not all the time, then, then uh, in, in bits and chunks as we progress through our careers. Um, so I have a degree, a bachelor's of science uh, from an engineering school and uh, in biotech of all things, and then um, decided that life was not for me uh, and moved into computers. And I tested software for a lot of years and I got a lot out of that career. Um, but knitting was a hobby and knitting was a hobby that complemented the mental work that I was doing in, in software, testing software. And at some point, it became much more interesting than testing the software. Mm -hmm. And I decided uh, I would try and uh, launch a little business in the fiber arts industry. And I started exploring what I could do in that industry. Um, and my first step into it was working in a local yarn store. So for those of you out there um, who work in local yarn stores or have a local yarn store, that can be a place to start. Uh, it can help you become familiar with the yarns that are out there. It can help you decide or investigate any interest in teaching that you may have. If you're at all interested in communicating about the fiber arts industry, uh, you can explore teaching. Uh, you can explore uh, making things and trying to sell them. We have some nice tools for being able to do that online. You know, it used to be the case, and it still is the case, where you can go set up a little uh, booth at a local craft fair. We have a bunch of them here in San Francisco several times a year, it being a tourist destination as well as a, a larger city. And uh, so I've tried selling at some of those events. Um, it didn't work for me, but others uh, that I've I've talked to out there, you know, selling on Etsy is a great avenue if you want to um, sit at home and, and make some things and sell them and explore playing with yarn. Um, and so my career started at that local yarn store, um, and then it, I began teaching. And then from teaching, I moved from teaching locally to teaching nationally. And that happened because I was an attendee at a local Stitches event. If you don't know what, what Stitches is, they are... Um, much like uh, Vogue Knitting and uh, Vogue Knitting Live and uh, Interweave, uh, the Interweave events, they are large conferences held around the nation. Um, and there was one local I'd always wanted to go. And I went to the local one and I had a fantastic time and sidled up to the people who were teaching uh, the free learn to knit classes and asked if they needed any help teaching the free learn to knit mm -hmm. classes. And they said, well, actually, um, we do. And I, I um, showed up to teach uh, the next year. Uh, and that led to submitting to their regular proposal process, submitting for their regular proposal process. And so just to keep talking about my path and how one thing led to another, I mean, I had no idea where I wanted to go with all of this. I was just exploring and trying things and finding out what I liked and what I didn't like. And I liked the teaching part. That led to doing some tech editing uh, because I was good with spreadsheets and numbers and I like words. Um, and that led to a little bit of designing as well. So... Uh, I'd been designing to, in service of the teaching because if you're going to teach a class, then you you might want to make something. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that led to discovering more about the submission process, which led to submitting um, for magazines and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, so. and I like how you mentioned that you worked in a yarn shop in the early days and you asked to help at stitches yeah. events because I can't tell you how 
valuable that is. Um, I were I tried that. I worked at a yarn shop for a little while, and it was like, actually, I did not like it. Um, I liked hanging out at the at the little circles, you know, the yarn circles at the shop and that sort of thing, like on knit nights. And I would learn so much from what the knitters had to say. So it's like yes. that's where I became more inquisitive, and and I discovered the behaviors, you know, and, yes. and what knitters wanted as well. And also hearing your, your journey, Beth, it just, it, it, it makes me think of how intertwined designing, teaching, all this stuff really is because, you know, yeah. I've been talking to some people lately in these, um, I've been doing these free um, discovery sessions, you know, coaching sessions that I can share uh-huh. with you guys later. Um, but, you know, one of the questions was, you know, I, you know, or, or kind of thinking I need to just teach or design. And actually they kind of go, both go hand in hand because yeah. if you don't yeah. really know how to write a pattern or, or translate a pat- pattern, understand the mechanics of what's happening in it, then you can't really, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to teach, you know? So yes. it, it's all one, it's like, it's like two, two wings of a bird, you know, they, they go together for sure. And, and if you're another thing that I, another um, thing that came out of working at the local yarn store um, that can be good for you, depending on where you are in your, journey and what you're thinking you might like to do is I learned a lot about the craft itself about what is a knit stitch uh, because Mm -hmm. you're usually called upon to help people fix things that have gotten uh, shall we say just uh, off track Uh, dropped yarn overs uh, you learn to help people reading patterns. You learn to help interpret what is actually going on in a pattern. So in terms of uh, craft development, developing your own knowledge, professional development, working in a local yarn store can be great for that. Um, so just backtrack to that a little bit. I wanted to push, put in a word there. Um, and as Kara was saying, you can discover whether retail is right for you. Mm-hmm. Um it wasn't right for me either. Yeah. Well, I mean, these are just good ways to explore. And then, especially for those of you who are like, hey, you know, I really love the idea of, I mean, I love knitting and I'd love to turn it into a career, you know, and then you just, the, the way to know what it is that you really want is through ex- exploration. And, um, and so, you know, that's kind of what I was doing in my early career. So I guess I could jump in and talk a little bit about about mine, Beth, or yeah, because you, yours yours is also a bit meandering, right? Did you start mm-hmm. as an illustrator, or was it something else? No, no, it's kind of funny and ironic how I ended up back to illustration um, because I went to college uh, for illustration, so I have a degree, a bachelor's degree, actually in, in illustration. And uh, in my senior year of college, I was interested in got really interested in. Um, in designing, you know, cut and sew. So I was like a mm-hmm. fabric and I just took a hat. It's kind of funny. I wasn't going to start here. I was going to start somewhere else, but this makes sense. But I was interested in, uh, you know, in fashion, in something that I could make with my hands that involved, you know, wearing it at the end, you know? Yeah. And so I took a hat. It was a, hat. it was a millinery, like hats, millinery, you know what millinery wow. is? You guys? Hats? Really? Yeah. I mean, like a one hat would take 20 hours to make, you know, oh, and this was just a hat. Uh, and it was all made by hand and sewn, sewed by hand, sewn, sewn, sewn by hand. And it had wires and buckram and all these. Oh, my God, I can't believe I haven't wow. thought of that tool, that particular material in years. So I got interested um, at that point. And I was always artistic, always creative, always making but yeah, so senior year, I was like, okay, like this is where, this is kind of like the way I'm going. And Marie says, love millinery too. Cool. Um, so anyway, uh, fast forward a couple, more than a couple years, probably five years out of college. I'm trying to think how long, maybe if you have five, five years or so, um, you know, I just started working and I was working. Um, I decided that I wanted to work in the garment industry. So I got a job in the garment center. I just, I'm like one of those people that I said, I want to do this and what do I need to do it? And I just made that happen, even though it was like a lot of work and effort and portfolios. And so I put together a portfolio and I started pounding the pavement in New York City and uh, got got a design job uh, in in New York and did that for about five years. And I was like, I can't, I just hate this. My life is horrible. 
no, I mean, it was just, it was cutthroat, super cutthroat. But if I had, if I, you know, had a crystal ball, like then I, I probably would have been like ahead of time. No, but I'm glad I had that experience because it, it really gave me a, a, an amazing grounding. And then while I was still working in the garment center, I discovered knitting or rediscovered it because my grandmother taught me when I was a little girl. And then I, I, um, rediscovered it at, in my twenties, my early twenties, which was in the mid nineties. And, um, and then I started knitting as a refuge, as a, as an escape, as a comfort, not an escape. I would call it as a comfort, uh, from my day job. And, okay. and I discovered a yarn shop right around the corner from where I worked. And I had no idea this shop existed. It's like, what, how did it just appear to me now? So anyway, um, I just really fell in love with knitting again. And I said, I, how do I do this? How do I make it happen? And then uh, I started just studying what other people were doing, you know, cause there's no blueprint. Right. Like we said before, there's no, there's no blueprint. So I said, all right, let me, let me just follow what others have done. You know, Lily Chen, Melissa Leapman, other yes. designers at the time, because there were crickets in the nineties. There really wasn't a lot going on in, in knitwear, not yeah. at least that I could find. Um, so it was quiet. Yeah, it was Just harder than I'm going to inter interject, Kara. Yeah. It was it was so much harder than to f to find out. You know, I, I tended to notice names, so you know, I I was aware of Kristen Nicholas, you know, for yeah. example, uh, exactly. it, Melissa Leapman, whoever. But how did you find out what they were doing? You know, you you couldn't yeah. find out. It was it was much harder to find out. How did they get started mm -hmm. in this? You know. Well, I was just any other really, backstory. Yeah, I was just so hungry to to find out, so I can remember always. You know, I was I would I read a story about Melissa Leapman in Interweave long, long time ago, Interweave Knits. Yep. And about how she was doing this, and I'm like, she's doing this thing. She's a knitwear. She's an author. She's a teacher. She's a designer. What, what, how do you do that? So that was it. And um, and of course, I read stories uh, about Lily Chin and and all the. Yeah amazing yeah. things that she did, like get on the tonight show or it was David Letterman, you know, like things yeah. like that back then. And I was like, I want to do what they're doing. And, yeah. you know, and then, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So I was just on a quest to figure it out. And I was lucky enough to have a mentor early in the early days. I was, I sometimes talk about her. Her name is uh, Arlene Mincer and she's, she was a, n a designer, known designer, probably in the seventies and eighties, but she's uh -huh. still out there just not designing. She's just, enjoying life right now and not, not, you know, focusing on this as a business, but she taught knitting at this little shop called the yarn connection on Madison Avenue in New York city. Right. And she was my teacher and she encouraged me to go for it and uh, to start, you know, going down that road. And she suggested that I teach. And anyway, that's another story because it was right around nine 11 and I was scared I didn't want to go back into New York City after that. So never, I never pursued teaching. It was kind of weird that that was the catalyst for that. It didn't happen in my life. Weird. So anyway, yeah. I mean, there's more to the story, obviously. But, yeah. you know, just fast forward. And then I end up being the editor of Creative Knitting. And then yep. here I am today. <laughs> right. And, and a lot of people have stories like a lot of people that, I know I've spoken to and that you and I've talked about. I mean, they have unusual stories. They have meandering backstories about how they got into the industry. I know a lot of them came out of IT or uh, art, you know, or being a mom. One of my friends um, uh, is, a f she has been a, how do I want to say this? A hobby photographer for many years, but also teaching knitting locally. And then, you know, her kids left the nest and now she is working uh, in the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. as a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, people have a, a variety of backgrounds, all of which is to mm -hmm. say that if you are feeling, you out there who are aspiring to work in the industry, um, have a varied background. Don't get hung up on, I don't know how to you know, do this, or I've never done that, or I'm not good enough, or anything like that. Because you are. Mm -hmm. You are good enough. You just have to work really hard, figure out, try something. Uh, and see mm -hmm. how it goes. And also, you know, you, you only have to be a few steps ahead of other people that, you know, that, that you're yeah. teaching. And I think a teacher, sometimes to be a good teacher, it means that you can articulate and explain very clearly 
and in a very empowering way to the people that you're teaching so that if there's something that you know and you've been in that in that in the place of your students uh and if you're and you're not like i said not you can just be a few steps ahead of them it, it you can you can actually uh bring it to them in a much more uh, user, not user friendly, but a much more attainable, it's much more attainable. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. So, knowing, anyway. knowing who your audience is. <laughs> so we're, we're sort of, you've kind of led us to one of the, the things that you and I had, one of our talking points really, uh, which is, you know, knowing your audience, knowing who you're talking to, I think. Yeah. Well, we were so, going to say like your goals, like really what your goals yeah. are, right? And, who, and you're, so starting right. with your, actually who you're, who are you talking Thanks, to? Marie. Right? Your audience. What you know? What is your why? You know. Yes. Um. So, um, exactly. You know what that is, and I think before you move forward with, uh, you know, down a path that you think you know you want to go down this designing path, but how exactly, uh, are you going to do it, and why do you want to do it? Yes. You know? So exactly the you know the figuring out your why. I mean, are you? It, it's kind of in the know yourself category, and it sounds silly to sit down with a notebook and a piece of paper, but it's totally worth doing. You know, you have a if you have a sort of this amorphous desire, like you've been knitting for a while and you're making up patterns on your own, and you think, can I sell them? What 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 could I have? What could I do here? I love working with yarn. You know, is to mm -hmm. sit down and and say, well, okay. Who am I, you know, and what what goals might I have out of doing this? If I want to do this professionally, do I want to do it for money or do I want to keep it as a hobby? Do I, and, and what's, I'm going to back up to say what's possible with your life constraints, right? And I'm going to say that mm -hmm. just because, like, I, I know that one thing that has shaped what's possible for me in the last 10 odd years is uh, the 14-year-old. Right. I have a 14 year old son. So what's been possible in my career for the last um, 10 plus years, 14 years, actually longer, is related to um, his existence and part in my life and and how much I want to be part of his life. Right. So mm -hmm. could I go out and travel and, you know, as a teacher, teach at local yarn stores and guilds all around the United States? Could that be my career? given the constraints in mm. my life, I wanted to spend time with him. So I'm only started, I've only started to travel to teach stitches aside, because that's where I've been teaching for the last, uh, oh gosh, I don't even know, 10 plus years. You know, that's four events a year. Um, aside from that, I haven't done a lot of traveling to teach the mm -hmm. way that other teachers like Patty Lyons or Gwen Bortner or, uh, I think Melissa travels, speaking of Melissa Leapman travels a lot to teach. I haven't been able. So that's a life constraint. My photographer friend couldn't really develop her career until she got her five, count them, five kids. Oh, my gosh. To yeah. A, a certain point, uh, in, you know, and out the door or uh, to a certain point where you can travel more, you know, when your life mm -hmm. permits. So that's when I say life constraints, I mean that that way as well as, you know, your life constraints. Uh, well, what do I know right now? And do I need to learn more? Um, not that you need to know it all before you get started. Please mm -hmm. don't, mm -hmm. you know, please well, don't exactly. think that. All right. And you know. um, no, sorry about that. I just no, cut no. you off, Beth. Sorry about that. Not uh, at all. Jump in, please. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to say something else. Oh, yeah. So about the life constraints. Now, here's this is a big one because many of us that are started that when we started in this world, and I know that many now that, that they work, they have a full time job. So right. um, this is a big reality, you guys. Um, I just want to mention it because um, it. In, it's, it can be hard to develop. It can be done. So, yeah. Yeah. but I mean, I think the, the safest and the most um, sustainable way to get into this in the beginning is to start on the side. And that's yes. when you can explore and not worry about the money or any of that kind of stuff. But if, yeah. unless you build your online platform and you really spend time developing that, which could take years because there's a way to really 
do that. And we were going to kind of go into some of that, but boy, yes. it's already almost three 30, but, uh, cause we could talk about this for so long. So I'm yeah. just thinking we may need to have a part two on this one, Beth. I'm thinking, yeah, <laughs> we might, we might. What do you guys think? I mean, you have a lot <laughs> well, of questions. Part of we, what we have here is we're going to ask you for some questions too, in a little bit. So, yeah. But I mean, the, the, the kind of the full-time job thing is something to consider and to think about, hey, you know what, if I really want to get out of my day job, then what is it that I need to do beyond developing this skill as a knitwear designer, you know? Yeah. Like, what else do I have to offer as a service? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's, and then really turn it into, that can really turn this into right. a real business. Because, like, this is what I did. Going back real quick, I'm sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to mention I knew that I wanted, this is be, before I was with Creative Knitting, I knew I wanted to, um, you know, do this full time, you know, and do it, do it for a business. So I was designing knitwear and it was a small piece of my business. The bigger piece of my business was being an illustrator. And I was also a freelance editor for Annie's, you know, for three years before I became the editor of Creative Knitting. So I had those three income uh, uh, streams, if you will. And you know, the, the, I made most of my money as an illustrator. So, and, but the good news was that I said, you know, hey, I can do this for the industry I love, right? So like, yeah. that's good news for you. Meaning, you know, if you find these, that you have other skills to offer uh, the industry, then, right. you know, let's say you're a good writer. Well, you, you can niche down your skills as a writer and focus on the yarn yeah. industry as your client base and right. take on you know, jobs within the industry. Exactly. So there's so many ways. So anyway, so what, what kind of right. question do you think we should show, we should throw out there uh, right now, Beth? Well, I wanted to say, um, because we, she, she and I do this all the time, by the way, for, for those of you who don't know, Kara and I talk a lot offline as well. And they, the conversations are fabulous and go on and on and on about stuff. And I, <laughs> so one of the tips I think that we had for y'all was to, to, you know, find somebody else. It sounds like some of you from reading the comments that you know each other through this um, medium already, that you've been on calls or, or somehow know each other. Maybe partner up with somebody just to bounce ideas off of each other or thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I wanted to say one thing, backing up two, two little points or a point, was um, to recommend small bites. Right, because mm -hmm. that whole thing where it was talking as much to myself as and to others who are like me, who want to put their arms around something fully before they feel they can start, is stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. I mean, get enough that you feel like you can, you know, get enough knowledge so that you feel you can, you know, start to move, and it's going to feel really uncomfortable because you're used to wanting your arms around the whole thing and understanding the whole thing before you get going. But start moving the, I don't know, the mixed metaphors are all coming to mind, moving the ship, moving the ball <laughs> down the field, moving the ship into the water. Like, just take, just do a little, have small goals. Like, yeah. So as far as this goal setting stuff, like have a little goal, little goals for yourself. And it could be something as simple as I need to learn more about fixing mistakes or I need to try teaching at my local store or I need to design something for my church group or, you know, right on, something. right on, Beth. So, <laughs> Um, and you can begin to dip your toe into, if you think you want to become a knitwear designer, you think you, you can dip your toe into um, pattern writing. You make that little pattern that you're going to give away for free and, you know, read through it and try and make the instructions clear and then see what everybody thinks of your instructions. Because now, and now I'm moving ahead to some of those skills that we talked about. Um, but I, you know, I just want to stop you there, Beth, because sure. I think we can go into because we have a, a few. I see in the comments a lot of people saying yes, part two, part two, part two. And I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that we can we can talk, um, you know, a little bit more here on your point in a second. But you know, about you know becoming a professional and just really yeah. figuring out is this a business or a hobby, and and then maybe go into 
I don't know, the tools, and then we can stop there and kind of pick up with how to make it more sustainable. Because I feel like this thing that we're going to talk about, the sustainability has to do with building your presence online, because that's going to come later. Because that's what you're talking about here. Like, you want to hug everything right now, but you really... So we can talk about that in in part two, two. have that. So I think... You know, um, Kara, it could end end up being part three or four. (laughs) I know. I know. So, um, but anyway, so can you, did you want to, I don't know if I totally messed no, you not up at and all. you can't remember I, your I, point. I, I think that was just like, we were talking, I was talking about setting small goals and taking things in small bites and living, you're going to have to live with that feeling of uncertainty about, about uh, what you're doing. That, that I think that is part and parcel. I think it's fair to say that it's part and parcel of what you're stepping into. If you're stepping into to this as a a new career or possibly having it become a career is dipping your toe in the water and just accepting that it's going to be uncertain and uncomfortable because all new things are inherently Mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Exactly. So we talked about goals and life constraints. So think about what your personal goals are and what they, whether they fit and how they fit into your life constraints and how you can do small bites. Um, And then we were also going to talk about, we started to talk about what is your why um, right. Um, yeah. And, and so, yeah, so I think we kind of, we already covered that. Um, so it's really just to kind of just figure out once you are exploring, you know, once you've, you've really spent time exploring, where do you fit in? Like, what is your mission statement, if you will? Like I know when, when I work with my coaching clients, they know that if they're not hundred percent clear, one of their first tasks is to write their mission statement. And I think I saw you, Evelyn, in the, in the chat so that, you know, you have to write that, but then it just becomes clear that, oh, like I can actually now develop a blueprint for what it is that I want to do based yeah. on this mission statement. So it's like out there, there it is. It's way out there. And I'm going to figure out what, it, what all the stuff that I need to do in between. So it just makes it, um, it makes it clearer. And also, yeah. and I hate to burst the bubble, but, but, and on this way myself, you know, we want to do it all. We want to do it all and throw the spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. And that is important. However, there comes a time if you want to be in business, you have to make you have to make a decision and decide on one overarching reason that you want to do something and then make that your mission. Because if you study successful people, you'll see that that's what they did. And they stayed ninja focused on that course to success. There's an acronym that is um, John Lee Dumas. He's the um, he's the host of Entrepreneur on Fire. It's a podcast, and it's focus. Follow one course until success. I mean, it's that simple. I don't know if it's his acronym or someone else's, but that's it. And if you look at his uh, his career path, his his kind of trajectory from where he started and how he became like probably the top 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 podcast in the business category, he just focused on the podcast. Period. Period. End. Um, so at some point, if you want to make it a sustainable, you know, something sustainable, you have to make that decision. So did I need to put that out there now, Beth? You think that was just too much? No, I think that this is a, and this is a, this is something I wrestle with. And, and, you know, I mean, because I don't have laser focus per se. Um, I, I think that, that trying to figure out, I, how do I want to say this? Uh, I have mission statements for myself, and they're helping me focus on the things that I want to do. But you know, Carol, let me let me ask, you, let me turn the turn it around and turn it into a question, actually, um, because most people that I know of in the industry wear multiple hats. So that the question that may come up for people is. Um, you know, how do I, how do I balance this? Like I need to do several things and wear several hats versus having laser focus. Like it, it, how does he define mm. that? Yeah. Laser. That's a, that's a really good question. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, one that I grapple with, but here it is. It's like, okay, so let's say you have a, an overarching one. You can call this one thing that you want to, um, you know, be the the most amazing a knitwear, you know, the knitting teacher and travel the circuit and hit all the the top shows and teach online classes, whatever, all these little things. Like you want to 
kind of fit that all under this umbrella of teaching, let's say. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that teaching could be you're doing a tutorial for a magazine or you're, you're occasionally designing something too, because right. you have to, but I'm saying this one, this one thing inside this one thing, you're going to have, you're going to have to switch gears and do another one thing. Right. Um, and then you'll have one things for your health and wellness and spirituality and all this other stuff. But yes, I totally see what, what you, it has, there has to be a driving force. So right? it's basically one thing is your son and the rest are the planets, meaning right. S-U-N, yes. not S-O-N. One so is like, your son. So like mm -hmm. your son is teaching or your son is designing or your son is tech editing. And then mm -hmm. everything else you do is, is a satellite or maybe I should yes. say planet because sun is confusing in this context. Anyway, you have a thing and then everything else is a satellite that feeds into it. So exactly. Exactly. Your focus, if your focus is teaching, any designing you do is in service of the teaching mm -hmm. promotion. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so then example. you keep, sorry, go ahead. No, for example, and then the, yeah. the, any tech editing you do might be so that you can buy food on your, to put on your table and then you can, uh, <laughs> you can continue with your designing work mm -hmm. because that's your passion and where you exactly. want to focus. Yeah. And then you make that, that your one burning passion or whatever it is, but there's so many things. Like I think of it like an umbrella too, and all the things underneath the umbrella, you know? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, so I was thinking we could kind of, um, go, uh, go on to the next little point that we wanted to talk yeah, about is, sure. you know, becoming professional. So yes. deciding, I think we sort of covered this in a way, but it's like just figuring out, is it a business or a hobby? Right. Um, but I think that that's what it comes from exploration. You might come to the point where you're like, you know what? Um, I've discovered that I don't want to do this as a business, that I'd rather do it as a hobby or maybe, right. you know, a hobby business, right? Which means you're dabbling and you're doing it on the side and you're making some cash. So right. let's just say whatever you decide your decision is, then the next point is I want to be, become professional. How do you do it? So right. we have some things like, uh, that we, we kind of came, came up with some different points, Beth. So did you want to talk about some of those ways that uh, right. someone can start to go down that professional path? Right. So, you know, you've already taken some steps in that direction because you're here listening to this podcast. Okay. So, or Facebook live show. Uh, I guess we're going to have this both ways, correct? Yeah. I kind of call it a live podcast now. That's kind okay. of the way I'm going with this. So. Um, so, you know, explore some other podcasts, uh, find out um, what other people in the industry, what their backstory is and how they got started and, and where do, where do they, what, what do they do? Um, something that you should know about, I, I mean, I'm sure you've heard Kara mention TNNA, uh, the National Needlework, National Needlework Association. Um, Needle Arts. Needle, Needle Arts. Arts. Needle Arts. You're right. Um, and, uh, that's one avenue. It's a trade organization. So it's historically been uh, focused on the relationship between the local store, local yarn store owners or local needlepoint store owners, local store owners, let's go with that. Mm -hmm. And the wholesalers, the people who sell things to the retailers uh, that then they resell to customers. Um, but that is an industry organization that has lots of resources and provides lots of networking opportunities. Um, for those of us who design and te or teach, we are service professionals to the industry, and there is a group. There are many subgroups within TNNA, depending on what your area of interest is, your segment. Your are you a weaver? Are you a um, a, a knitter? Are you a crocheter? Are you a, a stitcher? Are you an embroiderer? What are you? Um, but for us. For those of us who are service providers, there's a subgroup called Business and Creative Services. I just want to give a shout out because I was co-chair of that committee. I've, seen, I've stepped down recently, uh, but it was a great group with great resources um, for networking with others like us uh, and T&A, not to over overdo it, but they also provide classes and webinars. If you can make it to a trade show, if you can, if you join the organization, um, you get discounts for attending the show, which will provide you with opportunities to take on uh, on-site classes and network, meet a lot of people. Actually, the the story you should know about Kara and I and how we met and how this French <laughs> friendship 
jumped off, I led it right around to that, was uh, she had just become editor of Creative Knitting Magazine. And I had worked with the previous editor writing little tutorials, um, tutorial articles and developing a little project uh, for that magazine before uh, Kara was editor. And so I had been thinking about starting to do that again. And I guess she'd been thinking about getting me to do it again because we saw each other down the hallway at TNNA, down an aisle. And, uh, and I was walking at her doing this and she's walking at me doing that. And, uh, and we had never met face to face at that point. I just no. knew, I just knew you and your face. Maybe we Skyped, but I know I don't think we did. You know what? It's the name tags. It's those badges that really help because Absolutely. I was like, Beth Whiteside, <laughs> you're Beth Whiteside. <laughs> we, um, we did need those stinking badges. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. And that's you guys, that that's what happens. It's like this magic. Like once you, yeah, because it was a, it was a game changer for me. It was a career builder. It built, TNNA made my career. It made my career, period. Um, yeah. I've been saying that a lot, period. <laughs> yeah, that's it. End of story. Um, right. But it's true. It really is true. And um, right. I really, I highly encourage any of you that are really thinking about, you know, really serious, because I know there are a few of you watching right now that are, um, that's, the, that's the next step. Joining it TNNA is, is. is absolutely is. the next step. And, you know, yeah. we can talk more about that uh, and what you need to do to walk the floor. That's a good topic, Beth. That is a good Walking topic. The TNNA floor and what you need to like sort of right. your, TNNA, you know, itinerary yeah. and resource guide. Yeah. But anyway, so we've got those, the groups. Go, right. You can keep there's, on going there. There's TNNA, TNNA and uh, several other industry groups. Um, if it's there's CHA, you may have heard of that. That's the Craft Hobby Association, um, and they are more general. Like we're talking, it it includes paper making crafts and, um, not woodworking, jewelry and, and larger industry things. Mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, a paid for um, association, the Craft Industry Alliance, uh, mm -hmm. just to talk about some some other organizations that can help you develop develop professionally. Um, on a more affordable scale, shall we say, there are Facebook groups uh, out there that are targeted at people who are either thinking of joining uh, the industry or have joined the industry and are just starting out. Um, and what else did I want to say about Facebook groups? And of course, there's Ravelry. Uh, there are several... Mm -hmm forums for would-be designers and you should not feel embarrassed to apply to join them. You you should just mm -hmm. go ahead and do it and um, join the group and participate in the discussions and ask questions there. Go back through their archives. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that was my thought on organizations and industry professionals. Ah, yeah. TKGA, right? Oh, well, yeah. and also... Right. Yeah, TKGA was mentioned in the comments. The Knitting Guild um, and Association. We'll, we'll kind of go go over there in a second because I see some discussion, and I may wanna, I may want to jump in here because Sue, yes. you have a concern, and Cynthia is is helping helping her. Thank you, Cynthia. But um, I also wanted to mention Craft Industry Alliance, um, which is a great trade organization for makers, yarn crafters. Um, and it's, it's just phenomenal. They have wonderful webinars and lots of resources. And actually I'm doing a webinar in September. Actually, it's actually going to be how to start a podcast and also how to pitch to be on a podcast. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, you know, really being face to face. LinkedIn is another one, by the way, because LinkedIn, right. I'm seeing this trend kind of coming, this wave coming back with LinkedIn and, you know, really it's just utilizing that for, uh, networking. And then, of course, you know, education when you go to TNNA, taking classes, taking classes at your yarn, local yarn shops and, and all that. So anyway, um, I just wanted to jump into the comments. And all, before we go further, I think, Beth, maybe yeah. we should just say that tools um, will we'll start. We'll do a part two and we'll start sure. with, you know, like the online, offline tool, tools, business, you know, more just kind of ways to get organized, sustainability right. and other ways to make money. Um, so I just wanted to um, go here to Sue had a, a concern. So I'm going to just read this. So um, Sue, just in a nutshell, so Sue is focusing mostly on hobby. And she, she joined my Stitchucation Shawls workshop, okay. and which is was for you, you, exactly you, Sue, and everyone else that wanted to build their skills and learn how to be more of an intuitive 
know, take an intuitive approach to knitting and empower yourself, right? But, you know, there's also a mix of people here on Power Pearls that are designers and also, you know, you're yarn crafting enthusiasts. So Sue, you are in the right place, but maybe today, you know, it just, because you, you're saying that you really don't want to start a business. So, you know, today isn't exactly on topic for what you are wanting to do. Um, but of course, you know, I like, this is a mix, right? I do a lot of different things here on, on, a, on the podcast. So hopefully that helps. You're not in the wrong place, Sue. We love you. <laughs> We're just kind of diving into this more detailed area today. Right. Um, so anyway. You know, just to, to talk about that for a second, I mean, for anybody knowing more about your craft, and w when we talk about professional development, it doesn't mean just business or skills, for example, it includes craft skills. So um, learning anything more, teaching yourself more about your craft, whether, whether I'm using craft because I think knitting, crochet, weaving, whatever your thing is, um, is is going to feed into how, how do I want to say this? How you personally, what you personally can do, right? Whether you decide to make it a business or not, the more you know, the more you can do, the more exciting it is. I find that that's a feedback loop for me. Like um, if I learn just a little bit more about something, like I had this aha moment <laughs> some years ago now, after I had started working professionally, it was like, Oh my gosh, the stitch, the row of stitches on my needle have no identity. I just purled a row, mm -hmm. but the stitches on the needle itself have no identity. Ah, oh, like shown <laughs> in the air, right? And, and so that was a moment of aha about craft that then from going forward, it made it a lot easier for me to count rows and, you know, know what to do yeah. next because I True. knew that that row had no identity. It was the top. It was what I did on the next row that would determine whether those stitches were knits or pearls. Mm. So that was a, a craft aha moment. Um, and that then will, you know, it'll make me a better teacher because that's one of my goals. Mm. It'll make my writing about the industry and about craft easier because now I have this piece of information to share with students and with readers. Um, and generally, as I sit there and want to play with knitting in the other room, because that's the other thing that I, I think that I hear you always encouraging is that people play with their yarn and needles because this is how we figure stuff out. Sometimes we figure it out by just playing around with what's on the, on the needles. Then you know more about what's going on when you drop stitches or, you know, want to try a new stitch powder. Yeah. And that goes for whether you want to design or you just want to, you know, you just want to knit for the sake of knitting. So um, I think that Again, this is we're we're diving into some deeper territory, um, and so it is always like a mixed bag. And I kind of oh. want to please both ends of the spectrum here. Mm -hmm. So I think. Um, oh, and then Sue, they're uh, so wanted, intertwined. They're so intertwined. Our craft that we love. I mean, chances are, if absolutely. we're working in this industry, it was because we love to play with yarn and needles. Playing exactly. So Cynthia had some advice for you, uh, Sue. I don't know if you if you saw this. Um, so she says, Sue, I don't think you are in the wrong place. Keep knitting as a hobby, but you can totally use some of the some of this podcast to help you with things in the future, uh, like when you want to design your own pieces or selling your awesome creations. So that's it, Sue, because you remember when you took the workshop, how excited were you? I remember you posted your, your photo with yourself and you posed and we got to see your face, which I loved. Like you actually, that was the, you were a designer, you were designing for yourself. Right. So whether you want to design professionally or design for yourself, a lot of this right. stuff that we're talking about now is kind of, you know, you can use, pull out what you need and throw out the rest. So maybe for part two, you know, maybe part two isn't quite for you, Sue. So like, I think what we'll do is we'll probably stop here and I'll just tell you guys where we're going to go with part two and then um, kind of wrap up. And so what we'll do in part two is we'll talk about the tools offline and online tools. We'll talk about, um, you know, business tools or how to stay organized, product development, meaning your patterns or whatever it is that you're going to do. Maybe you're just, you want to be a fiberista, right? And you just want to like celebrate yarn because that's something that we didn't talk about too, because we're really trying to keep it specific yes. to knitwear design. 
Um, but maybe that's something we can, br we can bridge, you know, we can talk about in um, part two, or maybe that becomes a part three. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> sustain how to make it sustainable. And what I mean by sustainable is embracing the online world. You know, you can't only do it offline and you need to kind of have a mix. So yeah. both, you know, off and online and then how to build your platform, you know, all the little moving parts and then other ways to make money, affiliates, how to become a brand ambassador. And then yeah, finally, yeah. we'll end with that leap, you know, take the leap of faith. Because many of you say, I'm so afraid. I don't know if this is sustainable. And I've been hearing that a lot in the, in the sessions, in the free discovery sessions. You guys are not sure if it's viable. Well, the bottom line is you got you to gotta just get in there. You, you have to figure it out for yourself. You have to make mistakes because you're going to make mistakes. And, you know, that's it. I mean, I, I can't, yeah. there's no magic bullet. I can't tell you this is how you do it and you'll be a success. And a lot of people out there tell you that this is how, that if you do it this way, you'll yeah. be a success. And that is not true. No. And something to remember, <laughs> failures are your practice, are the practice that leads up to your success. So it's not really a failure. We're going to, we're going to take the weight off the wor no. word. We're taking the weight off the word and we're discarding it. And we're saying they're practice. These, this is practice before practice. you have success. I like that, yeah. Beth. Thank so you. Beth, you have a special gift. Do we want to give it now? No, okay, or should we wait? I think we can do it because we, we already said we were going to give you, give everybody a gift. Well, since the gift is actually, because, you know, this happens to me all the time. I have large ambitions and small amounts of time. Um, <laughs> what I do have is in thinking about this, this is, um, it will be a future gift anyway, but I decided based on talking to Kara and what you guys, what thinking about what you guys might be interested in is I decided to start a newsletter uh, called uh, Biz Over Create. And in that newsletter, which will come out to six times a year, there'll be tutorials. It's targeted at you guys um, six times a year uh, on an article about working in the industry, something you might need to know or appreciate having knowledge of. Uh, for example, what was one of my examples? Oh, it's oh. just gone completely yeah. out of my head. Anyway, this is the gift. So so if you go to my website, bethwhitesidedesign.com slash forward slash. Forward slash, right. Forward slash biz hyphen. Cre oh, gosh, what did I call it? <laughs> it went out of my head, Kara. That's okay. Uh, well, you know, we can always put it in the uh, comments. Biz, biz and, over, biz over craft. That's what it's called. Biz over biz craft. Over craft. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and that's, and uh, you were talking, when we were talking about this earlier. So really, you know, you're, it's like a, like a curation, like a news curation site too, for knitters, yeah. for designers, for anyone that's really wanting to know what's hot, you know, be in the know, right? right. In the, in so the world. if you go to biz hyphen over hyphen craft, Beth Whiteside design forward slash biz hyphen. That's why you needed a pretty link. Slash. That's why you needed uh, I'll a, give you a pretty link. That's why, that's why you needed uh, a pretty link. Biz dash over dash craft. If you go to that, you'll see a little blurb about signing up for the newsletter. Um, and then the resource guide is really the gift. That'll be the freebie. I mean, with newsletters, you can always unsubscribe. Um, so the, yeah. the, the business resource guide uh, will be sent to you as soon as I get it together. <laughs> yeah, that'll be coming. And you know what? Maybe it'll this, be in uh, time for part two. Um, yeah. Right. Well, just drop it in the comments, Beth, when we're done. So everyone can sign up and get on your list. Ah, so that's yes. super cool. And also, you guys, you know about the community, the Patreon community. So um, I just want to share some cool stuff that's coming up. So if you join the Patreon community, uh, do you have something else you wanted to share, Beth? Oh, doing one more thing. Yes, Cynthia, that's it. You got it. Um, if you, oh, good. if you, I wanted to say one more thing. If you're going to join us for the next part, please consider doing the homework. I was going to be all flip and say, I'm going to assign oh. you homework and shake my finger at you, but I'm going to suggest um, something to you guys. And that is to think about this. What are your goals? Question the why question. Um, you know, not, it doesn't have to be heavy. It's not a, it's not a school homework assignment. It's a, a personal, like, what am I doing assignment? And then the other piece, so part two would be 
to think about who you might market that to. Like, who would you like to be selling to? What would that person be like? Like, seriously, sit there and think, you know, in my first answer when I was asked this question, so who would be your target audience for your products? My answer was, well, someone like me, of course. And then I got lazy and I didn't want to answer the question. I didn't want to sit down there and figure out who that person was. But it, when I did, it was so extremely helpful to sit there and know that this person, you know, who I would be marketing to would be someone who is uh, interested in the technical aspects of knitting, who likes to um, come to class and learn how things work that I wanted that that's, that's basically, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Just sit there and think about what those people would be like, what would be their qualities. If you're a designer, it would be, what are they, what would that person wear? You know, is, is that person a J crew customer or are they a Saks Fifth Avenue customer? Who are you designing for? So that's good. Great, great advice, Beth. Um, all right. So I think that we did it. I just want one more announcement, um, you know, just about the Patreon community because some things are changing, you know, lots of revamps of uh, the rewards. So I just wanted to share uh, this ongoing monthly challenge thing that I have coming up. So if you join at the $5 level, you'll get uh, monthly challenges. And I have a stash therapy challenge coming up. So I'm really excited about that because that's going to be actually starting out. Um, it's going to be like early August is when I'm planning on getting that going. So I'm just mapping all that out now. So if you join the community at the $5 level, you'll get these every single month. And then, you know, you also get mini sods not released anywhere else, a private Facebook group, and, uh, you know, patron only posts. So check it out at powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash community to sign up. And so I, I think that's it, Beth. Thanks I for so. me. And, two, and then we're going to have a part two. Um, part I don't two. think it's going to be next week because next week I'm going to have, you know, I have, an, I have another guest. <laughs> so you guys will have to come back for that. I have a new series starting. It's called Tea and Chocolate with Kara and Jackie. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Jackie. It's going to be more on the arty side of knitting. Very Well, you, well, you and I have to come arty listen. too. Yes. I know. It's like, Beth, maybe we all have to chit chat. So anyway, that's it, you guys. So this was great. And Beth, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on there, uh, Kara. Very much appreciate it. All right, you guys. So have an awesome weekend. And I'll see you next week. All right. Okay.